Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listen to discretion is advised. It is time to enter the Suplug Round. City. Hey. Hello, Super City, and welcome to another edition of the Super. I am Andy Kwan, and with me, as always, is Liam Dunn. You've caused a little bit of controversy within our lovely little city, Andy, this I... uh, this past week or so. Um, so before we ask Andy his weekly riddle, I thought we may as well just knock this on the head because. Andy made some comments about Roman Reigns last week. Obviously, Roman Reigns was suspended, and he's suspended for 30 days for his first violation of the wellness policy. And Andy took it. We, we did a breaking supla. That's what we codenamed those videos. It's not the official name. Um, but we did a video about his suspension and the fact that he's basically the top guy in the company at the moment and how this is going to impact, one, the championship scene going into Battleground later on in July and Roman Reigns as a whole, and whilst I agreed with Andy saying he was a failed experiment, Andy kind of, he went a little bit further, um, I don't know if you would like to re-quote some of the things that you said on that video. Uh, I said things such as, uh, he got the biggest push in history and fucked it up, he was a tool, he buried people, uh, what else did I say? Um... The, uh, he's not a draw, uh, and the ratings have gone down. Whilst you're correct, the ratings... I would say the ratings have gone down, but that has just been a general trend. The house shows is... That has been truly... That has been reported, that Roman has been... Uh, his, his leg of the WWE house show tours have been doing very, very poorly. That is a fact. Um... That is not just off the dirt sheets. If you, you know, people who went there can verify that they are drawing around the same numbers as the BC, uh, B show that plays in smaller venues, smaller towns. That is a genuine fact. So um, I can't argue with him there. But some of the people on YouTube have taken issue with what Andy has said. Everybody's talking at me. John C., for example, he wrote quite a lengthy email. Uh, this is why I stopped res uh, stopped watching wrestling. Folks in the IWC are the biggest hypocrites. Seriously, if these nerds got their way, only people WWE would push are guys between five foot seven and six foot, or have the same kind of background, spent decades on the indie scene. Now, before I move on, I'm not quite sure why that's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, like I need to address this this clown's comment. Well, I'll just keep going for now, and well, we'll come I, back I wanna, to some of these points. I want to dissect it bit by bit. Okay, so. all right, let's dissect it bit by bit. So let's go off what he's just said. So apparently, uh, put, so he says that the only people being pushed are five foot seven to six foot guys uh, with the same kind of backgrounds, with spent decades on the indie scene. Apparently, he says this is a bad thing. How's okay? So you're telling me that's a bad thing? Oh, uh, why? Like what? AJ Styles being the company is bad. Samoa Joe being in the company is bad. Uh, Austin Aries being on NXT is bad. Having Shinsuke Nakamura is bad. Are you... F Kevin Owens. Uh, Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins! Are you fucking crazy? Like... Dean Ambrose. Dean a Exactly! The guy who has the belt! Right. Here's the thing. The term IWC as well is single-handedly the most irrelevant stuck in the 2000s comment or phrasing that you could probably ever have ever because everyone on the western world has access 
to the internet. You can get it on your phone. You can get it on your laptop. On a fucking tablet. You can you can get it anywhere. Hell, probably in ten years you'll get it on your toaster, right? Like, that's the dumbest comment. And when people like Jim Cornette and Russo and a lot of them talk about the IWC, they're stuck in the 2000s. They're stuck in the 90s. That's the dumbest thing anyone could ever say. Just stop it. So I, I'll just jump on here. I won't be as quite as vicious as Andy there. But my the thing is for me, um, I don't see what the issue is with pushing guys who are normal height of five foot seven to six feet. One, I feel more related to the character with that because they're the same kind of person as me. Daniel Bryan got over because he just looked like a normal guy. Yeah. Right. He was good in the ring, but the fact that he had a shaggy beard, long hair, he didn't he wasn't ripped. He just was a normal guy. People related to that and they liked it. But the other thing for me as well is that and this Roman Reigns suspension is such a perfect example, right? WWE ever since the early 90s of the steroid trial have been so desperate to try and get rid of the image of steroids. Whilst I understand what he's saying, I don't think it's necessarily a smart idea to push the overly jacked seven foot twelve people like having someone who's normal is kind of a little bit more relatable i understand like okay there's the argument where well you look at superman who is like seven uh, six foot five he's big he's ripped that's something that people want to aspire to and i but get people, that people but that's look a at superhero. superman like he's fucking boring well, no, 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 no. That's, boring that's, villains. That's got villains. Wow. That's one of the most boring. Really, you really know what you're talking about, buddy. No. Right? I've, I've, I had a day at work. Right. He's one of the most boring. I had a day at work. You've got no excuse. Anyway, the point of the matter is, is that that's a superhero. Wrestlers are supposed to be portrayed as real people. That's, I mean, okay, you've got the Undertaker, but let's, let's talk about realistically here. Right? They're supposed to be people that, like, you look at someone like Santino Morella, who, whose gimmick was that he was a guy in the audience who won the Intercontinental Championship after being picked out in the crowd. Right, that's the kind of wrestling world we live in. These guys are meant to be portrayed as normal guys. Normal like, guys aren't six foot twelve. And like you look at UFC, I know they they've gotta be like fucking crazy to step inside of a cage and fight. But a lot of these people are just normal people who I mean, they're not overly gimmicky. Yes, they have people who are six foot, but they have smaller people. Like, their drawers. Like, what in God's name are you talking about? So, moving on from what he said, uh, and all they have, uh, this is going back to his comment, and all they have are the same move sets: Flip, flip, kick, karate kick, flip off the rope, flip off the turnbuckle, and a random submission hold. What is Andy talking about? What are you talking about? Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn about agreeing and disagreeing with him because I do see his point. Um, it's called The Business Evolves. Like in the 80s, the, a DDT was a finishing move. Because it, in the 80s, that was a devastating move. Te technically, it's a finishing move now with Dean Ambrose. Right, fine, whatever. But there are moves that, like... Ordinary people do, oh, like, as just ordinary moves. It's just a fact. Things evolve. Things change. They progress. That's how life works. D but yeah, but, but hang on. Just to play devil's advocate, whilst I think we can agree the Ricochet Willow Osprey match was a very good match, it, it, it did come across a little bit more of a dance than a wrestling match. And I think you have to agree there. I haven't seen the match yet, so I don't know. Well, they, brilliant. Uh, before he got... I'm going back to the comment here. Before he got hurt back in, what, 2014, 2013, people used to pop for Reigns. Folks didn't turn him in, on him until Daniel Bryan came back and said he was going to be in the Royal Rumble. Um, I... Yes, people did uh, cheer for Roman Reigns, but people also cheered for John Cena when he was Dr. Thugonomics. Yeah. Um, People, the thing is, is that the best way to put it is if I gave you uh, fish every day, right? If you, if I gave you a plate of fish to eat every day, you might be okay with that for the first couple of days. 
But I guarantee by like the sixth or seventh day, you'll probably be a bit fed up, fed up of it, right? Now, imagine having that constantly shoved down your throat for about two years. Can you really blame people for wanting to see something different? When yeah. you've had someone like Dolph Ziggler, who has worked very, very hard and never given the chance, I think a lot of us believe he deserves, over someone like Roman Reigns. Okay, Roman had his time in the sun. He doesn't need to be there at the moment, especially with the crowd reaction he's getting. Put someone else in. I'd like to see Dean Ambrose feud with Seth Rollins more. Right? They always put on a good match. Let's keep them and, in the title picture. And the Have is... Roman go off and face Brock Lesnar. Have that think... match that you never really finished at WrestleMania. I know that Carmine and Sam hate me saying this, but it's true. Like, the last time this drastically happened was, ironically, a relative of Roman Reigns. The Rock. Right? When he debuted, nobody liked him. Uh, well, he, okay. was basically, uh, he was basically Apollo Crews at that point. Yeah, so, uh, he... Okay, at first some people liked him, but then everyone was chanting, Die, Rocky, die at him. So he turns heel, joins the Nation of Domination. Eventually, you know, because people were liking the stuff he was doing, becomes a face. It works with Cena. He did the Dr. Fugonomics thing, uh, and he was a heel. People liked it. And he turns face. Even with Austin. Austin was supposed to be a heel. But people liked it. He becomes a face. It's not difficult. Look at ha another one, The New Day. They were... Uh, his, uh, th this is a brilliant example. The New Day were supposed to be baby faces. But they were getting booed. Right? They were getting booed because people didn't like them. They didn't like their gimmick. They didn't like what they were doing. So they turned them heel. Then they got over and they became face again. And that's that's my main example because that's more recent than any of the ones that you've just mentioned. Yeah. Going back to what his comment is, it's quite long. I'm trying to go through it as quickly as I can. Um, he said, and who did Reigns bury? Lesnar kicked his ass 96% of the match and it was Rollins who walked out as the champion and the IWC whined about his run as champion. I think the reason why people whined about his run as champion is because he just... It's it, Look, it's okay to have one or two matches that are ended by disqualification or someone runs in to help Seth. But when it was every championship match or roundabout, okay, there might have been one or two that he won without any interference. But I think that's what it was. He never came across as a legitimate champion. People but... weren't whining about Seth Rollins as champion. They were... Ro they were complaining about how they didn't seem to book him strongly okay, right and maybe... people have their opinions but i think that's a clear fact that everyone was interfering because he was part of the authority and they wanted to keep him as the champion kayfabe wanted to keep him as the champion as long as possible maybe the word berry was a bit extreme oh, i'll probably admit that now i may have gone a bit over the top i think it was just a bit angry i was just angry now the fact that AJ Styles threw everything but the kitchen sink at him and then loses to one spear in the first match. Bullshit. The fact that he just wiped the League of Nations off the face of the earth to the point where Rusev is only recovering, Sheamus, Sheamus, and well, Wade Barrett doesn't exist anymore. And, he's, uh, he, he's been knocked out of continuity. He's non-canon. <sighs> Shut up. So, the, and there's stuff like that where... Burying is not the right word. The wrong person either won, or they could have done more to help the other person not look like a bitch. Because I think... I don't know. No, I disagree with that. Their match at Extreme Rules, AJ looked really, really strong. I mean, yeah, it, it, I, I I mean know, Roman I... speared him in mid-air. That was a good way. He didn't look weak going out by that because that was an epic moment. Like, that was a legitimately, like, holy crap moment. So I disagree with you on that. I don't think... I think they booked it fine, frankly. Well, I mean, the League of Nations, you can't deny. The League of Nations, you can't deny, no. But the thing is, the League of Nations was always there to be Seamus's lackeys. And it was clear Seamus was going to drop the belt to Roman. I mean, if it was me, I'll tell you what it would have been if it was me. I'd have had Sheamus retain the belt all the way through to the Royal Rumble, right? 
So then that's where it looks like Roman uh, is finally going to win back the title. And then Triple H comes out and wins the belt there. And I wouldn't have given him that one month reign as the champion. That's what I would have done. But then again, the whole reason that match was made was to get the belt off Roman. Uh, kayfabe wise. Anyway, continuing with what he's saying. Uh, we I don't know if we have to cut this down. We might have to. Yeah. Um, Rocksteady cashed in on him and beat him. And when he got it back, Triple H won it from him and clowned him. Uh, oh, clown! yes, okay, I get what he means. And clowned him until WrestleMania 32 match. And he lost matches to another IDCW favourite, Bray Wyatt. He's not one of ours on here. Um, if you listen to the show regularly, you can tell we're not fans of Bray. Yeah, but, uh, last, yeah, but last year he buried Bray Wyatt. So what are, you, what are you talking about? Since we're on the subject of getting shit handed to them, I didn't hear too many fans cry when AJ Styles got a title shot after being with WWE for a few weeks. That's because he's one of the biggest names in our industry. For all the knocks you'll got for Reigns, i.e. he can't talk or has no personality, but you'll love Cesaro and the man has a personality of paper. Reigns can't, can't talk, Reigns has no personality. Cesaro, I see where you're, what you're saying. I do, I get what you're saying. Um, but I think he's better in the ring. And I think, and the other thing as well is that Cesaro had a fan... Uh, he had fans going into the company from, ironically, what you were just complaining about, his time on the indies. Um, I don't see why having an indie scene is a bad thing, because they come in with fans. Like, uh, Cesaro has got a personality. Like, he uh, legitimately... All right, ex okay, explain, explain, because I think he's got a point, to be fair, with Cesaro. Like, the, the promos he did, uh, especially the one with the, the Money in the Bank one, where they were all sat on the ladder, I thought Cesaro did good. I think he did all right. I don't understand what the problem is. The issue is, is that Roman Reigns... Okay, it doesn't help that he gets fed shit lines like, I'm not the good guy, I'm not the bad guy, I'm the guy. And he gets, like, sucker and sucker tash and all this shit. But he just... He's not a talker. He just can't fucking talk. He's like... In my ideal world, Roman Reigns would have never spoken a goddamn word. He would have just smashed, like, just crashed destroy people That's he should what... have you know what he kind of in my opinion i say that a lot i'm realizing what he should have been he should have been brock lesnar 2.0 right he should have been the modern day um ass kicker take no names literally you set you get in my way i will put you through a brick wall kind of guy yeah right and then when you have roman go up against brock it's more special because it's like well roman's the badass now. Brock's the veteran badass. Who's going to come out on top of this for scenario? Yeah, you've got these two Goliaths fighting. Like, the the issue... Um, the issue is, is that I think Vince, for some reason, has a thing for talking. He had Goldberg talk, for some reason. He had Brock eventually talk. Why? Why do you love talking so much? Mm. Sometimes less is more. Don't do any talking. Um... Going back to the comment, you hit on him uh, on wrestling ability, but for Christ's sakes, Rainbow Mika from Street Fighter V has better move sets than, than Ambrose. I don't play Street Fighter V, I can't comment on that. Um, and, I don't know what he means, but Ambrose... What do you mean and, move set shit? I'm guessing that's what he means. Probably, yes. What are you talking about? And folks who hate on Reigns act like he fucked your girl and made you cook him breakfast while he fucked your girl. Well, that's stupid, because I don't have a girlfriend. No, that's just a stupid thing to say, Andy. Um, what he's saying is that we're being salty for no reason, and I don't think what that's is... true. Um, I've salty? never come. I've never acted that way about Roman Reigns. I think that's a little OTT. I thought Daniel Bryan was the most overrated guy the IWC beat off to. I didn't have the same level of hate for him. No, say that sentence again, that doesn't make sense to me. I thought Daniel Bryan was the most overrated guy the IWC beat off to. I didn't have the same level of hate for him. So if you thought he was overrated, then you must hate him then. I, I right? don't... Right? I, Am I right here? Yeah, That I, doesn't I think, make any sense to me. Yeah, Am I the only person that, that thinks this? That last sentence doesn't quite make much sense, John C, but... Anyway, he's entitled to his opinion. Uh, sure, I've fine. Tried to, I'm not, I'm I've not tried... denying that. Like, you're entitled to your opinion. 
Like, I love how people would, like, there's more comments, and I don't want to sit here all day and do this, but, like, I get it. People didn't like what I said. Oh, well, tough shit. That's my opinion. There you go. Deal no, with it. No, no, I think people are, uh, respect your opinion. Uh, it's when you don't back it up, and I think you needed to take this opportunity All right, to fine, I will back it up. It okay. is a fact that the ratings have gone down pretty drastically from the moment he won at Mania. So, when was Mania, Liam? April 3rd, yeah? Yeah. Right, okay. So, they did a 2.93 on the, the show after, which is fair enough. They always do good. Then it drops to 250. Then it drops to 232. Then it drops to 2.2. Then it goes up slightly again to 235. Drops down again to 2.26. I could be here all day. It's a fact that the ratings have kind of just gone... Nyeh. And uh, they're only uh, uh, really uh, starting now to go back up. Yeah. It's a fact. That's I don't know. a fact. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily down to... Because the problem is, is that you're talking about overall average. And we're not looking at the specific moments that Reigns in, is involved in. Yeah, I know. But you can't deny that if you keep shoving this guy down people's throats, no, they're just no, not going to fucking watch. And they didn't turn up to the house shows, which is a That's fact. That's a fact. That is so a stop fact. having a go at me, like saying, you're full of shit. These things can be backed up. Look it up, read a book, get a clue. Yeah. Um, I'm sticking with my previous comment that I think Roman is a failed experiment. I think there's a chance that he can be redeemed, but I just think the, with trying to stay on course, being like, you know what, screw what they're saying, they'll eventually see, see us our way. Um, no. And I read on Twitter, uh, not Twitter, I read on Reddit that people are like, oh, why don't they just push the fans, uh, the people that the fans are voting, uh, rooting for? Like, why are they shoving down people uh, down our throats that we don't want? And someone on Twitter, not Twitter, I keep getting it fucking confused, Reddit said, well, that's what wrestling promoters have always done. They force you to like someone. And I understand that, but 2016 is a very different time than... 1996. I mean, I don't want to bring up politics in this country, but I feel like it's a good analogy. Okay, here we go. Brexit time. Right, time so for Brexit. Here's the thing. We've been so quiet on this. Yeah, we've been keeping well, we it so to, to ourselves. It, right? I'm a Labour guy, right? right? So, what happened was I voted for Jeremy Corbyn to be leader of the Labour Party, which are like the Democrats. So, during this whole thing, he didn't really do anything, and everyone's saying, well, because you didn't show any leadership qualities, you need to leave your job now. Mm. Vote of no confidence. Yeah, vote of no confidence, and I'm kind of in the middle, because I can see where they're coming from. Like, a leader is someone that should actually do something. But if you asked me a year ago, I think he's fucking great. I get that I'm in a minority of people because I don't know how many people are in the Labour Party who are registered. I'm not registered. I was just I just chipped in a free quid so I could vote in this thing. But I think there was only like a hundred thousand plus people and that was it. Now bearing in mind the population of this country is about sixty something plus million people, right? Right. A hundred and eleven thousand isn't that many people. And you have to cater to the masses. And you've got to convince people who are not normally Labour supporters to go vote Labour. I get that. But, at the same time, you've got to keep your... Uh, I'll turn this back to wrestling. You've got to keep the fan base that's still watching after all this time, because they will fuck off somewhere else. Whether that will be UFC, whether that would just be taking a shit, anything else, right? So... If you have a TV show as well, a bit like with the t the Tories are doing this as well, the Conservatives are ripping each other apart, and from the outside looking, it's like this is fucking chaotic. This is absolute chaos, and it's the same with wrestling. If you turn on the television and you watch Roman Reigns coming down the ramp with that belt, I know he's suspended now, but when he was the champ, and you can hear everyone booing, you think, is he a bad guy? But they're telling you he's a good guy. What? So you just get yeah. confused and be like, oh, fuck this, I'll turn this off. Uh, and uh, just uh, ignore um, it. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's quite to that extent. I think the thing to me that kind of shows why this is a failed, failed exa uh, experiment is the fact that it's not even that Roman gets booed, right? It's not even that. 
is that he gets booed, but they mute... Well, they lower yeah. the audience's microphones. Even with John Cena during his most hated time, which was like 2006, 2007, they didn't lower the volume of the microphone. Now, whether that means that they didn't care as much, or if this is more hate, the fact that they're lowering the microphone shows to me that they realise that something is wrong, that he's not connecting to the audience, but they refuse to fix it. I'm not saying that Roman needs to be taken out. Uh, well, I, okay, I said that he did earlier, and I get it sounds a little bit hypocritical, but I'm not saying that he doesn't even ever need to be the world champion. I'm not saying he's not world champion material. What I'm saying is, is what he's doing at the moment is not resonating with the fans. And, uh, and, and my... that is why it is a failure. And that's why I said it was worse than Kevin Nash. Because yeah. with, with Kevin Nash as well, at least eventually, he became a draw when he went to WCW and he had the old NWO thing. Yeah, he eventually became good. I don't believe Roman has that quality about him because at least Kevin Nash could talk. Mm. And I don't, I don't think... I, don't, I mean, yes, Kevin Nash doesn't know what an adjective is and a, and a fucking verb, but whatever. The issue is, is that Roman, since he was champ, the ratings didn't go up. They plateaued down. They went down and just fucking stayed down. The house shows were bad. He got booed consistently. I don't think he got cheered once this past year from 2016. I can't think of a time. Maybe I'm wrong with that. I don't know. But I can't remember a time. He got booed at the Rumble. He got booed at Fastlane. No, no, no. To me, it's not even him getting booed. Yeah, I know, but it, no. but the thing is, obviously, he's not resonating with people. That's the fact. No, no, no. This is the difference because John Cena was getting booed and they were okay with it, but it's the fact that they lowered the audience's microphones. Yeah, but John was also selling merch. Well, that's that's what I mean. Like, there's something that's just not connecting here. This is why he's he's failed worse than I think anybody so far. And that's why I'm sticking by, he's a failed experiment. And I don't care if people think that's aggravating or pretentious or anything like that, because it's a fact. If they're having to mute the microphones, something is going very, very wrong, but they're refusing. It's to me, it's like when you see the iceberg, but you don't try and turn the Titanic. Yeah. Like, you're heading for disaster, and... This is what's happening. People are not interested. This is why people like Andy is so vicious. I mean, I don't have the same hate of Reigns. I can The thing is, it, I could be even worse than Andy. I don't care. And that's worse than... Andy cares. He's invested in hating Roman Reigns this much. But he cares, right? He takes his time to really rant about this. To think about his points as to why he dislikes Roman Reigns. Me? I don't care. And maybe that's worse. Yeah. Uh, maybe I am the worst out of the two of us with this. Yeah, Because maybe. I don't care. I never thought I about that. Care. Apathy is not good. And the thing is, as well, is that it's a bit like Brexit again. Oh, God, here we go. Right? <laughs> People are just sick to death of the way things are. They're sick of politicians lying all the time. They're sick of the country being the way it is, they're sick of everything. So they're like, fuck it, I'm going to vote leave. And at this point, Roman Reigns is proof that this industry cannot stay the way it is. You can't force us to like what we like. You don't like what you like. You like Roman. No, I don't. Fuck off, Vince. I like who I like. And the majority of the people in your audience who are paying you, who are fucking the only reason why you exist, to be fair, is because of us. You are a consumer-driven product. I don't give a fuck if everyone thinks this analogy is stupid. Because it's true. Like, we put money in your pocket. Listen to us. It's not hard. We're sick to death of the way things are. He's, 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 he's good, but he's not the guy that we want. And ironically, you put it on one of the guys that we want. So, you okay, maybe you are listening, but... Fuck. I mean, it, it has to come a point where you just think, 
Do I like being rich? Yes. Do I like having more money? Yes. Do I like being a popular brand and a part of pop culture? Yes. Fucking do it then. So, with that in mind, we're going to go on to our last comment. Just before we go to a little ad break, we're going to go on to our last comment. And this is this is a little bit of controversy I made. It wasn't quite to the level that Andy made. But Andy's best friend, Heartbreak Kid 101 uh, of course, anybody who listens to the show regularly will know that these two have a little love affair going on. Clearly. We don't have a love affair going on. That's anyway, weird. she mentioned... We, we did, a, obviously, a review of Money in the Bank. And I mentioned that Titus O'Neil, just before he started his match, kissed his son on the lips. Yes. And it creeped me out. Right? And that caused a little bit of controversy with Heartbreak Kid 101. She said, in some cultures, kissing or pecking your family member on the lips is a format of greetings. I guess in Western countries, it's tied with incest, but normally it's like a hello. You guys sounded really ignorant talking about how it, how wrong it was. Um, okay. And I'm just going to quickly, briefly talk about this. Okay. Whilst, again, I understand what she's saying, uh, the problem is, yes, we're a Western country. WWE is a product made by a Western country. We're Westerners viewing a Western product. So, for us, that is not our culture. It is a bit weird. I understand in another country that might be fine, but over here, it's not. In America, it's not really. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's another example, right? Just a differences of culture. Did you, okay. Now, when you go to a restaurant, Andy, yes. you try and eat all your food, don't you? Yes, I do. Because if you don't, it looks rude. It looks like you didn't enjoy your meal. Indeed. Now, did you know in, I believe it's China, if you did the exact same thing, that's actually considered rude because it's telling the chef that he didn't fill you up. And it's rude not to leave food on your plate. Well, I didn't know that. That is a difference of culture. Yeah, so the thing is, it's like, we live in a connected world and I think it's easier to offend someone. By saying yes. one thing, and the thing is, as well, it's like, like you say, there are differencing of interpretations, and everybody comes from a different perspective. Like, I hate Roman Reigns. Some people like Roman Reigns. Some people leave food oh, on their Jesus, plate. Some go. people don't leave food on their plate. Some people kiss their kids. Some people don't. There we go. It's called the world. Do yes, I just for me, I just feel like I have to defend that because I don't think it's ignorant because. We're Westerners talking about a Western product, and in our culture, that's weird. Maybe in another culture, it's fine. But if I was reviewing something from their culture, then that's a different matter. Yeah, what you, I'm would, doing... you would have you would have that you would take that on board and have that in mind. Yeah, like if you I... go abroad, you 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 like when I go on holiday. For, here's, I know... a, here's an example. Here's another. Here's a great example. We're British, aren't we, Andy? Yes, we are. Right. Now, when you do the number two to someone, and you point it, you point the palm of your hand to yourself, and you do the number two. I'm currently doing here, it. This over here is actually a swearing gesture, right? No other country is it a swearing gesture. Yes. Now, if, if you, I went, you would go two like that, if you do that yeah. to me, I'm gonna be like, the fuck you. What the fuck? Now, you if say? I went to America and somebody did that to me, I wouldn't be offended because. It's not a part of their culture. Yeah, I get that's it. That's what I mean. Like, right? if, if I went over there and someone like did we call that, it, we call I... it flipping the V. We call it flipping yeah, the V. But that's the thing. Like, I don't understand. Like, if I go to Greece, I know there's certain things that Greek people like to do that I don't. But I respect their culture and understand that that's a part of their history and their heritage and how, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not like. You, you get what it's I'm not saying? ignorance. It's not ignorance. It's that's how it is for the culture we're in. Here, and, this is our yeah. perspective, and you can interpret things the way you like. We live in a like well, not all of us live in a free world, but like it's You're doing all right over there, Syria. <laughs> so, but you know what I mean. Like we can, we can. <laughs> oh God! But you know what I mean. Like everybody is allowed to interpret things in their own way. Because we live in a in a democracy anyway, where we are, so that's what you can do. You can interpret things however you like. Stop f being all Tumblr and shit. 
Yeah. Yeah, this isn't Tumblr. This is the Supla. This this is, should this... know... People should know this by now. Yeah, we are not Tumblr. <laughs> to be fair, that is definitely not the worst thing I've said on this show. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you're, you're pointing that out. You're saying that that's the worst thing he's ever said in the eight years. You need to go back. Go back. There are worse things. Far <laughs> worse things. And with that, we'll go to a little break. After these messages, we'll be right back. It is time to enter the Supla Ground. <gasps> yeah. What is Absolutely. All right, so that's enough with that rant. I've got that off my chest because that took up an entire that half of the show. I didn't think it would go on that long. No, I didn't. Like, but I, you needed to defend yourself, just yeah. as you need to defend yourself now, because it's finally back after a uh, after a little break. It's been on a little break because we had the freaking NXT show and then the review of that, and then we've just had a, and then he wasn't here for one episode, so. He's finally, it's like he's, I've been trying to avoid this. It is, but you can avoid it no longer. It is, of course, Riddle Time! We should have a little intro. Little intro. I, I'm afraid I've got a riddle. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got a riddle. <laughs> okay, what are you on now? Do we know? What, the, the riddle streak or the streak streak? We're not talking about... Oh, no, no, like... We're, we're, we've been talking about riddles. Why would you confuse it with a different streak? Because I have two, and it's confusing sometimes. What number no, we're talking I'm about on. riddles. We're not talking about Sam. Oh no! Ah, Sam. Okay, Sam. No, he's not here. He's not well, here. Well, I don't know. He's in the. He's not in the Skype. Fucking. <laughs> Look, leave it. Anyway, so he'll I'm... edit it in now. <laughs> oh, right. Are you ready? Let's do this. Okay, you can have a pen and paper for this one. I'm you, ready to go on. You may, you may need a pen and paper for this one. Right, how long is this one? This one's not that long. Alright, go. Okay, so, Drake lies on... Ch oh, like, ah, oh, fucking, let me start that again. Right, brilliant, take two. Right. Take you know two. what, so, does that mean that you get one on the whatever No, because this is getting edited out. Don't, don't. Okay, so... Drake lies on Twitter on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, but he tells the truth every other day. Kanye West lies on Twitter on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, but tells the truth, truth, uh, I can't even talk, so tells the truth every other day. J Drake tweets, yesterday I was lying. Kanye tweets a response, so was I. Which day of the week did they have this conversation? Okay, so that's Drake, and that's Jesus. Alright, so, Drake... You can make a little chart if it helps you. Wow, my phone is making a weird-ass noise. Why are you doing it on your phone? I'm not doing it on my phone. Oh, that's my bathroom. Right, so, um, so when does Drake lie again? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you not write it down? I did! I just, I, I was writing, I didn't write shorthand, I was like trying to, right. Right. Jake, Drake lies on Twitter on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, but I'll tells the truth every other day. Okay? Okay. Do you need anything else? Sunday. So you think Sunday? Yes. Was when that tweet went out. Yesterday I was lying. Bearing in mind that Drake does not lie on a Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Bearing in well, mind. Oh, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. You think it's Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, let me check. No, nope, it's not Tuesday. <sighs> so can you, when does can like? If you right, if you get the next one wrong, I will not disqualify you instead I will give you a hint okay so Kanye is it Thursday he lies Kanye lies on Thursdays Fridays oh, and Saturdays. So he does the other half of the week right gotcha but he tells the truth every other day yes 
Drake tweets, yesterday I was lying. Kanye tweets with a response, so was I. What day of the week did they have this conversation? Of course, if you're listening at home or watching at home, join in. Let's know what you think. Play along. Make a little table. Join in with Andy. See if you can beat him to it. I can give you a hint, and then then you get three chances. Alright, just do the hint. Do the hint. Do the hint. Okay, this is the hint. Yeah. There's a chance someone is lying. One of them could be lying about whether they're telling the truth yesterday. No, because Drake said yesterday I was lying. That's what I mean. Someone could oh. be lying. Oh. Only one of them. That's the only hint. So what? one of them could be. They can't both lie. One of them could. I'm not saying they are. One of them could be lying. Right, you've got three chances. Thursday. Well, fucking hell, I wasn't expecting that. Jesus well, I got Christ. It. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god. Here's my theory, right? So he, so Drake tells the truth every other day. So Wednesday, the next day is uh, Thursday. But then Kanye lies on Thursdays. So that means Kanye is lying, which means that it's a Thursday. Yeah, that is actually how it's done. Well yeah. done. Wow. Dude, dab, 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 dab my headset off. Dab it off. <laughs> Yay, I did good. However, I have to disqualify you because I gave you a hint. So you I said you were going to fucking disqualify me, you cunt. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm Yay. Kidding. I'm Add it to the list. Add it. <laughs> I was not expecting that. So, of course, now we've got the riddle out of the way. We've only got about 20 minutes left. So, we may as well talk about what it is people are here to talk about. What are we here to talk about? The brand split! Of course, the brand split. They've So, obviously, the brand split has been official. They've obviously announced it a while ago. But what they've only... Well, they've not even really fully announced it. What they've leaked is apparently they're adding... Four new pay-per-views to the end of this year, and some of them are going to be brand splitted. Brand splitted is that a word? Split. It's a word now. It's, it's a split. word now. Some of them are going to be uh, brand splitted. That's not a word. Well, uh, it is now. It's no, it's not. Shut up! It is now, right? So we may as well talk about what some of these are because some of them are actually a throwback to some pay-per-views that we had in yesteryear. But they seem to have dropped for, in favour of other events. So <clears throat> we're gonna have this. We're gonna have joint pay per views uh, all the way through from Battleground to SummerSlam. So Battleground will still be a Raw and SmackDown event, as will SummerSlam. SummerSlam will probably always be a joint one because it's one of the big fours. We were still. We are still keeping Hell in a Cell and TLC. Hell in a Cell is going to apparently be a Raw pay per view, whilst TLC will be a SmackDown pay-per-view. Survivor Series, one, once again, one of the top fours, will be a joint pay-per-view. Night of Champions has been renamed to Clash of Champions, and that is going to, go, going to be a Raw pay-per-view. It's going to be on the same day. But the new ones that they've added, we've got Backlash in September, which is a bit weird because Backlash is supposed, supposed to be the Backlash of WrestleMania, but I guess it's now the Backlash of SummerSlam. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be a SmackDown pay-per-view, which is weird because it actually, when it was during the brand split, it was a Raw pay-per-view. Right. Um, no Mercy's coming back. Everyone will remember that as the awesome N64 game from yesteryear. It is coming back as a pay-per-view and, just like it was in the past, will be a SmackDown event. Okay. Now, here's a weird one. That it's was... a weird one for me, anyway. Okay. December. The last event... Of the year is what do you think it would be armageddon you would be incorrect sir it is roadblock why 
That is a question I'm not sure anyone can truly answer. Okay, I think wait, they just so, ran out of names. By the way... You know, you had Judgment Day, you had Armageddon, you had Bad Blood, you had Vengeance, you had all these different names. And we had, you like, you even write... The thing that winds me up is the fact that they used a WCW event. Because Clash of the Champions was a WCW thing. Well, right? actually, it's just Clash of Champions. It's not even Clash of the Champions. It's just Clash of Champions. Which, by the way, is a Raw event... So how, and if they're going to brand split, then the shows are going to have separate champions. Yeah, that one needs to be, whatever. So, okay, that one needs to be, like, non-brand split, but whatever. So the point is, is that of all the things you bring back, you bring back that? What well, about make... Halloween Havoc? Well, the thing what is, about Starcade? The thing is, it's not that that I'm angry at. I'm angry at Roadblock, right? One, yeah, we like... had Roadblock this year. We've already had it, right? We've already had an event in 2016 called Roadblock. Why is this company's obsession with road things all of a sudden? Fast lane, roadblock, what's next? Traffic light, fucking hell. On top of that, the reason why it was called Roadblock was because it blocked the road of WrestleMania, right? That's what they always called it. They always like, tonight starts the road to WrestleMania. That's why we have Roadblock, right? That was a point of the title. Yeah. Why are you putting Roadblock as the last event. Like, Armageddon made sense because it was the final event of the year, but it was a final event. Judgment Day, it's the final event, right? I get it. Roadblock? In December? Only, what, 11 months since you last had a Roadblock event? This is as bad as when they had two Vengeance events in seven months. Yeah, like, I don't... I don't mind Roadblock if you put it during WrestleMania. I don't mind it. Well, it makes sense. But this is dumb. Like, and like, they own a shit ton of names. And they have an entire creative team of about, I don't know, six billion people or something, right? That's an exaggeration. But... I was going to say. But, they can't come up with a new name, so they're just like, let's use the one we used earlier. Like, what the... Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, right. Barry. Cheers, Barry, mate. What? Uh, uh, Barry, Barry. Well, Barry. I'm Vince McMahon, damn it. Barry. And, uh, Barry. Barry, your head of creative, what should we call the final show of the year? I'll, uh, I'll think we should call it Roadblock. <laughs> well, I want to call it Roadblock because I was driving today, because I couldn't drive, apparently. I didn't know this. But I was driving. No, no Barry, Barry would road. be allowed a license. Why would, why would Barry be allowed a license for anything? <laughs> Not even a Look, TV license. To, Nothing. To, Don't give him a to, fucking license. Who's to say he got it through legal means? It's Barry. <laughs> he probably... It is a license, but it's probably from, like, <laughs> fucking, I don't know, Antarctica or something. He's like, I can fucking buy sleds. I like, can I can drive sleds, I can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not how sleds go, Barry. I don't care. Barry, Barry, right. sleds are pulled by dogs or something. <laughs> not yeah, all right, Barry. Whatever you want, mate. Yeah. <laughs> But it doesn't make sense why it's in December. It's the... Why, Barry? Why All right, put it in let's, December? Let's come up with a name now. Not Armageddon, because obviously that's not PG. You can't have the end of the fucking world. So, what would you call it? Victory Chode. Yes, you know what? Vic Victory Chode <laughs> it is. Victory Chode, the greatest Victory name of Chode. names. Um, I don't know. I think I think you have... Um, you have ECW's... Uh, library that you could use you have a lot of their trademarks you have wcws yeah. you have awas there's a lot of companies that you own that you could use adopt the specials from that uh, why don't you have a, in your house why don't you bring in your house back saturday night's main event like why roadblock it could you could have okay starcade's a little too high powered for something just as a raw event but like andy said you could bring back halloween havoc Right? Not in December, that's just stupid. Well, not in December, you knob cheese. That'd be stupid. <laughs> right? And you can't call it des December to Dismember, because one, PG, and two, it's tainted. Um, what about, well, that's Super Brawl, or... Super Brawl? Super Brawl was a, an event in WCW. Well, yeah, it could be anything. Like, fucking anything. I, like, I don't... You know what? I'd actually be happy as well if they called it Bash at the Beach and it was held in Florida. Right? That makes sense. Yeah. On a beach? That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be a great gimmick. 
Well, you say that now. If it actually happened, you would hate it. I, you would be the first to turn on it. Why? I think it's You good. would! Uh, on a beach? At least it's different. Yeah, but you would turn on it. You'd be like, the sand will go everywhere and it will just be wrestling in a sandy bat. <laughs> are you... Are you... Are you... No, they did... Roman they did... won't even put over sand. Now you're just being a contradict, <laughs> condescend, fuck it, dickhead. Wow, brilliant. There you go. <laughs> He's just being a condescending asshole. English, know, motherfucker, do you speak it? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? <laughs> um, <not> now. <laughs> but on top of that, of course, like we said, they're bringing back some pay-per-views. I'm happy that No Mercy's coming back. It was one that I grew up with. I'm happy to bring him back, Lash back, even though it's in the wrong month. It was one that I grew up with. But the one that kind of worries me... It seems that our rumours are true. There is going to be two separate world champions. People are saying that it's already starting to happen. Dean Ambrose was not labelled as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion this past Monday. He was just labelled as the WWE Champion. People are saying that there's going to be a new second world champion to head up whichever brand Dean doesn't go on to. Oh. Andy, what are your thoughts? Do you think they're going to bring the big gold belt back? What's going to happen? Okay, look, as much as I miss the big gold belt, because it's a nice belt, no, don't bring it back. I don't... Don't do that. Don't. So what could this... Okay, what could this championship be called? Don't... Don't have a second belt. Okay, let's go with that train of thought. Why yeah. would you not want a second world championship? Because it just dilutes the... The... the re like... You, I know it was a long time ago, like 2012, where they unified the belt. 2013, but okay. 2013. 2013, right? They unified the belt. So it's only been three years that you've had the belt unified. Uh, to play devil's advocate, though, they unified and ununified um, a championship within the same year, in 2002. Well, okay, it was 2001 they unified it, and then by, like... Nine months later, they ununified it. That was that okay, fine. But the the thing is, I don't know. I it's just for me. It kind of it'd be more special if you have one champion, and then like like you would have the guy go to the other brand and defend their title, and you always be like rooting for the the other brand's guy because then whoever has the championship means that that brand is the A brand and if you want to have actual competition between the two brands then that would be the best idea to do that which I didn't explain properly in my article but that is what I would do I just think it's because by the end the world title like the big gold belt melt fuck all by the end it's true and I just don't want to see that again so the only way you can remedy that is have one belt no, that's true, that's true. The one thing, and this is a very weird thing for me to be concerned about, I want to know what's going to happen to Money in the Bank. Because I'm pretty sure they're not going to make that a unified uh, pay-per-view because it's so close to SummerSlam. Yes, it's. I think it's the unofficial fifth big pay-per-view, but I don't think they're going to do that. So I don't know what they're going to do with Money in the Bank. I guess, However, I guess you could just have from both in the match, but have the pay-per-view still... This is the thing. This split is not. Well, gonna this work. is what you I was going to say. Uh, hang on, before you, you jump down. J oh, hang on. The thing that I was going to say is, with how WrestleMania, both WrestleMania 32 and WrestleMania 31, having multi-man ladder matches for the Intercontinental Championship, do you think that they will just put the money in the bank back on WrestleMania it's and the then best, just scrap? It's, it's the, the best option one. to be fair because you can have both brands on the same thing. Because my argument as well is that. I almost think this gimmick pay-per-view thing finally needs to die because Money in the Bank doesn't work. What happens if you do a TLC match outside of TLC? Is you know, it's stupid. Like, no, I get what you mean. No, I do get what you mean. Yeah, I so mean. Hell in a Cell shouldn't be exclusive to one brand. That's stupid. Like, just get rid of the gimmick. Get rid of the gimmick events. And if anything, if this creative team had a sense of creativity they could come up with unique names for each show. You could have WWE Lesnar versus Roman Free. Well, that's what I mean. WWE. You could have, you could bring back In Your House. No, 
maybe not call just, them in your house because that. No, I think I think that's a. Uh, I think what you could do. If it's just going to be a network thing, I don't see why you can't bring back in your house. The whole point of oh, in the, your I don't, house. I mean, uh, the name, no, the concept, yes. So like, no, each, I think the name. Each in your house had a unique name. Yeah. Right. Just do that again. Don't call it in your house. You don't need in your house. No, just I think have you do. WWE, whatever. No, I think it needs to be called in your house. Anyway. um... Now, I'll, I'll just quickly talk about my thing. Thanks for asking, Andy, on my Yeah, opinion. what's your thing? Clearly, you care about what I think. Well, what's your thing? I think that this can work. However, in order for this one to be successful, they need to do what they did with the brand initially, right? Um, by this, I mean... The, th- the thing that scares me is that they've done the sprit split branded pay-per-views uh, before and after December to December 2006 they scrapped it uh, well it took about four months but they eventually scrapped it because it wasn't really doing very well and it worries me that this is going to be the same issue however to overcome something like this if you're going to do a brand split you need to split mm. so okay if you're going to have two separate world champions I understand that but Charlotte, who they have said at the moment, as of this recording, they said that she will appear on both shows. No, doesn't work like that. I'm not saying that we should have two separate women's championships on each brand. I'm saying that the women's championship should be on one brand. And then maybe, I don't know, bring back something like the Cruiserweight Championship off the back of the Cruiserweight Classic that you're doing this summer. Okay, and then that can go back to maybe SmackDown. And you need to make them both feel like very different shows. Raw can be the entertainment show like it was when you first did this. This can be where the shield is. This can be where they, you have Roman going, I'm not the good guy, I'm not the bad guy, I'm the guy. You can have stories of corporate Cain trying to screw someone out. You can have that. And SmackDown can be the big stage for maybe the NXT guys. I'm not saying that you can't have any big names on SmackDown, but what I'm saying is is that SmackDown can be the more wrestling-oriented show. Like, again, it was. There were some things about the brand split that did initially work, but it got lost in the shuffle, right? WWE started to get scared. They started pulling... As soon as someone started getting big on SmackDown, boom, they were over to Raw. When someone was losing momentum on Raw, boom, you're over to SmackDown, right? The brand split idea works. Heck, even the draft lottery works. Don't do it every year, right? You can have somebody on... You can have two people feuding on SmackDown for a year, right? And then you can have two people feuding on Raw for a year. Make them shit hot, white hot, and then you can bring someone over to SmackDown, right? Fuck Raw. Raw's got enough stars at this point, right? You can bring them over to SmackDown. Have someone like Seth Rollins feud with Finn Balor, right? That's something people haven't seen. This is an opportunity to create feuds that people haven't seen. You don't have to stick with the same roster for five years. I get that. Maybe after two, do a draft lottery. Maybe after three years, do a draft lottery. Don't do one every year, right? And if you're going to do a draft lottery, keep the same premise. Don't have it, oh, we're just going to pick it at random. And then the next year, it's like, well, we're going to have a draft lottery over five weeks. And it will be a new pick once a week. Like... No. And also, don't keep the draft lottery to just Raw. When you put more emphasis on one brand, that's why the other brand diminishes. When you put Raw to three hours and kept SmackDown at two, that's one of my big concerns. It makes SmackDown look like the weaker show. You need to give it a different format, a different formula. That's why I said, make that the wrestling show. No, like, very few storylines, even if they are storylines, they're very simple. Raw can be the really complicated ones of just... I don't know what shit they're talking about now. I can't even pay attention half the time. But SmackDown, they need to feel very different. They need different sets. If you're going to have a brand split and you're going to be like, right, we're going to have two world champions, then fine, have two world champions. But keep the women's on Raw. Keep the Cruiserweight on SmackDown. The tag team, again, should not cross brands. I don't know. if I don't think that should be split up. I think that defeats the purpose. But then again... You've got two world champions. I guess we may need two tag team belts, right? 
but you need to give them different feels. You can't produ you can't produce the same. Pro this is why SmackDown's been going downhill because they produce the same content as Raw, but it's diluted and it feels diluted. It tastes diluted, so people don't have it. Make it its own product, and I mean really make it its own product. Right, that's my rant over. Is he there? Hello. That's the thing. You have to you have to distinguish the two. Like SmackDown can't be Raw's bitch. It, it just can't. It can't happen. You've got to make people care about it. So. And that's what I mean. Like if you're going to do a split, you've got to do a split. Yeah. You can't half ass do a super show. No. We've already announced super shows. I think. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Right. The reason why. Just look at the past. They tried to do it with the Undisputed Championship, and it didn't work. They tried to do it with the Women's Championship, and it didn't work to the point where they were eventually like, fuck it, the Women's Championship's on Raw, we'll keep the Cruiserweight title on SmackDown. I think, with the Cruiserweight uh, Classic that's happening this summer, whoever wins it, right, this is what I would do. They clearly have a different idea, but this is what I would do. I would say, okay, whoever wins the Cruiserweight Classic will become... The new Cruiserweight Champion will be offered a uh, SmackDown contract there and then and will debut. They will skip NXT, right? I know it's a bit of a... Uh, that's a bit controversial, I get it. But they will skip NXT and go to SmackDown, right? And then you can use that as a way to push them. You can hire the rest of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament guys if you want to feud with the new Cruiserweight Champion. But that is a way you can push... Smackdown. Be like, look, we have the Cruiserweight division. You can push the Cruiserweight division as, like, what the X division originally was pushed as. Like, the whole, holy crap, yeah, okay, it's flippy and shit, and I know the John C didn't like that, but it's different. Yeah, that's the thing. They've got to... I mean, I, I, I briefly disappeared for two seconds, so I kind of didn't hear what you said exactly, but they need, a, they need everything different. Sets... Well, here's, here's another here's, a, here's an example, and I'm not saying they should emulate exactly this company, but you look at the style that Lucha Underground has, and I'm not talking about their their storylines or their backstage segments. I'm talking about what they do in the ring. It's yeah, very but unfortunately, different. Unfortunately, this thing is run by Vince and Kevin Dunn like, in terms of production, so mm. nope, mm. that won't ever happen. But that's that's what I say. I I say it needs to be. If you're going to do it, it needs to. Be, you can't. It's like having a breakup. Right, you can't have a break of and be like, "Oh, we'll just be friends and we'll meet each other for coffee every now and then." No, no. fuck off. It's, it's a over. breakup. It's, it's over. You split. You're gone. That's it. You put them apart. Right, pull them apart. And that is where I will end this. Okay. Of course. So, I of course have been Liam Dunn. I have been Andy Quan. And he's also got a riddle right. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. Do, 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 do. Alright, goodbye. And we'll see you next time. Who are you? Gabby. Why are you so weird? You have a celebrate me getting on video. We're definitely not re-recording this because we're not forgetful at anything we do. So, comment below what are your thoughts on this week's subject. Oh, wait, I've got to say what the subject is. <laughs> so, comment below what are your thoughts on Roman Reigns or the brand split. Visit Supla.com for the broadcast MP3 downloads of this very show. And now, for the first time ever, where you can physically see a Hall of Fame. Visit WrestlePundit.com for the latest news and rumours in wrestling. Find us on iTunes. Search our name and you will find us. Uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Instagram? What's that? In Instagram is the same... <laughs> Shut up, Liam. It's the same name as everywhere else. And uh, everything will be in the description below if you don't know what I'm saying or don't know what an Instagram is. Because who, who the fuck knows what that is. And uh, yeah. Uh, goodbye. I give all of my points to Carmine, meaning <laughs> that Carmine Antonelli now has 19 points. No!